All right, everybody, Matt Kleskowski here. We're going to talk a little bit about how to create that HDR image. And the very first thing you'll need is some software to do this. Photoshop comes with an HDR conversion. It's just not very good. Okay, so that's why everybody uses another program. Um, Photomatics is probably the most popular. You can pick it up over at hdrsoft.com. There are other ones out there. I've seen them work just fine, but just everybody that does this stuff really uses Photomatics. Okay, and they've got a very good trial version. It's a fully functional trial version. And um, the only thing it does is just output watermarks on your photos if you try to output something. Okay, so it's over at hdrsoft.com. If you do pick it up, I think NAP members get like 20% off of it. So uh, don't forget about that. Anyway, once you get your, your HDR program, if you're wondering why you have an HDR program, here's the thing. So when I was shooting these boats, notice we had a lot of, th there's the sky and the sunset going on in the background. There was detail up front and, and our cameras don't capture all this detail. In fact, let me show you really quick inside a Lightroom here. Um, here's one photo. All right, so we got some detail up front, but the sky certainly didn't look like that when I was there. Here's another one, a darker version. Now, that's closer to what the sky looked like, but the foreground definitely didn't look like that when I was there. All right, and then here's another one where I got a lot of detail in the foreground. In fact, a lot of the foreground did look like this, not quite as bright as this, um, but the sky and everything else wasn't blown out. Okay, so we can't capture all this detail in one photo. And that's why we use HDR. Now, uh, let's jump out of Lightroom for a second. If you don't use Lightroom, what you would do is you would find your photos inside of a Finder window or a Windows Explorer window if you're on PC. And after you've installed Photomatix, you can just go down to Open With Photomatix Pro. And you can go through the process of generating the HDR. And it's the same as I'm going to show you in a second here. It's just getting there a different way. Okay. Now, that said, I got to show you the way that I really do it. Okay, and I use Lightroom. I use Lightroom to manage all my photos. So inside of Lightroom, I would find those photos. And uh, it brings up a good point here. You can see I've got three photos selected. If you recall from the video, I took five uh, exposures. I took five different frames. That's what I set my uh, auto exposure bracketing to on my camera. So why is that? Well, on Nikons, you get the choice between three, five, seven, or nine frames. What happens with three is all you get is your base exposure and then you get plus one or minus one stops on the extra two frames, okay? That's generally not gonna be enough detail and not gonna be enough uh, vary, varying ranges for your HDR images. So I set mine to five frames, okay? So then what I get, you can see it here, the first one is gonna be your base exposure, the second one is gonna be minus two stops, the third one's gonna be minus one stop, the fourth one's gonna be plus one stop, and the fifth one's gonna be plus two stops. So all I really want out of these five frames are the first one, the next one, which is minus two, and then the last one, which is plus two. So that's all you really need. You can delete the other two photos most of the time because it's not really gonna help you um, when it comes to creating the HDR photo, all right? So now that we've got these three, uh, these three photos selected inside of Lightroom, which is what I use. Photomax actually has a very nice plugin straight into Lightroom, which is why I, I like that. Uh, you go down here to the file menu, down here to plugin extras, export to Photomax Pro. You're going to get um, your, your base dialog, which you'll get the other way. If you don't use Lightroom, you'll still get this dialog. We want to generate an HDR image. I'm going to attempt to reduce ghosting artifacts. Remember, the boats are on water, and it was very flat, but Photomatix can help us in reducing any of the movement, so I'll turn that on, okay? Go directly to tone mapping, yes. Align images, yes. Color space pro photo, stack with selected photo, output format, I'm going to choose 16-bit TIFF, okay? And I'm going to hit export, and what's happening here is Lightroom is going to export these three images as TIFFs and bring them directly into Photomatix. That's because Photomatix isn't a very good RAW converter, all right? And I'm shooting in RAW, so Photomatix isn't known to be the best RAW converter. So we let Lightroom do the RAW conversion and export this into TIFFs, and then those TIFFs will get used inside of Photomatix, which by the way, deletes them when it's done. It doesn't save all those on your computer, so you don't have to worry about uh, going to find them to delete them or anything like that. 
Okay, and it takes about a minute or two. Uh, Photomax has to load everything and align the images and, and do all those things. Um, and as it creates that full HDR image, so it might take anywhere from you know sixty to sixty seconds to uh, two minutes or so. You can see it gives you a nice little progress bar on the way as well. All right, so what we have here is our tone mapped image because that's what we want to do. Okay, we want to do we want to tone map these images, and we want to use the details enhancer method. That's going to give us the ba the best HDR conversion. Now, I've got a very simplistic way of working inside of Photomatix. I have the bare bones. I don't use all the settings. I just use a couple of them because all I want tone all I want Photomatix for is all the details here. Look at the detail. We have detail in the sky, and we have detail in the foreground. Back in Lightroom, remember, we didn't have one photo that had all of that in the same photo. All right, so I'm using Photomatix to save me the hassle of doing this in multiple layers in Photoshop or doing a lot of brushing and selecting uh, to try to get the best of, best of both worlds with one image. I'll let Photomatix do the work. Now, light smoothing is probably the main setting. I'll take my strength and I'll set this up to about 100. Okay, somewhere between 90 and 100, and that's going to... That's, that's how much of that, that contrasty HDR effect is going to get applied here. So I'll usually go pretty high with that. And then light smoothing is really the only other setting I use. If I go with something on the left, I'm going to get a very surreal fantasy kind of a style to it here. You can see as I move the sliders, you can see how it changes. But it's a very grungy, fantasy, surreal-like look to it. Okay. If I go with something on the right, I get a very natural look. So it's really a matter of, of which one, which effect do you like? Now, everybody says they want the natural look, but you know where, every, whenever I teach this, you know what everybody hovers with, hovers around? I always, everybody calls me up to their computer and they have something like this on their computer. So it's, it's kind of interesting how it happens. But um, I usually go somewhere in the third or the fourth option here. Okay, and that gives me a good balance of getting enough details in there, and I'll leave it at the third option for this example, which is going to give us just a little bit more of that fakey HDR look to it. But what we do have is color saturation, luminosity. We have tone settings here, black point, white point. I don't use these. In fact, black point and white point is exactly what we're going to do inside of Capture NX. Now, I don't use these because we're going to go to a program to post-process this anyway. All right, we're going to go to Lightroom or Capture NX or Photoshop or whatever it is. So we already know those programs. They're better at doing color. They're better at tonal settings and contrast and exposure. So I let those programs do what they're best at. I let Photomatix do what it's best at, which is getting me the best details. And then I let whatever program that I'm used to using do what it's best at, which is color and exposure and whatnot. Okay, so once you're done inside of here, uh, and by the way, it's always going to, if you go with what I said, it's always going to look very flat and it's always going to look like it needs more color, but we know that. Okay, that's what we're going to fix um, back on the set later. I'm going to show you how to fix those things, but I'm going to hit process. When you hit process, it is going to create whatever type of image that you told it to. Remember, I told it to create a 16-bit TIFF. We're in Lightroom, so it's automatically going to get imported into Lightroom. If you're not using Lightroom, when it's done processing, you just come down here to File, go to Save As, and you can save it as whatever type of an image you want, which at that point, that's what we're going to bring into Capture NX to work with later. Okay, so there you have a kind of little introduction to HDR. Uh, really neat stuff. It can be very, very useful and, and can actually save you a lot of time. By the way, if you want to learn more about it, um, I have an online training class over at kelbytraining.com. It's called Real World HDR, and it kind of goes into the whole process and how you can fit HDR into your workflow. Okay, folks, hope you enjoyed watching. I'll see you again soon. Mm -hmm.